she was given the title of Queen of Cotton. She didn't think of herself uh, in that role, but, but other people attributed that to her for that uh, accomplishment of, of helping save the cotton industry. She's one of these ones with, I think I, I put it, insatiable curiosity, which is a good disease to have. Uh, and you know, then launched at the age of 15 off into college where most of us were older, 18 years old or something like that. The U of C at that time was a hotbed of mathematicians and physicists, each working on the atomic bomb but not anyone knowing what the other one was doing. She was in the midst of all of that. The cotton industry was facing a replacement with synthetic fibers uh, and the cotton industry would have gone away. Uh, farming and, and uh, cotton ginning and many of the other aspects of the industry. Polyester would, had just become a really big thing. There was a definite danger that cotton would be replaced. We had synthetics, the various synthetics, Dacron and so forth. So the, the, the cotton industry was suffering because everybody was going into synthetics. Ruth's accomplishment was to figure out how to keep the molecules that make up the cotton fiber from moving during the laundering process and causing wrinkles. And she did that by hooking together the cellulose molecules that make up the cotton fiber. This is a segment of one cellulose molecule here and another one here, and they're connected to each other by these weak hydrogen bonds in the, in the magenta. After Ruth finished, she had put in this other molecule in between the two chains with strong covalent bonds that kept the two molecules from moving. A revolution, no iron finish. So if you want to make it permanently pressed or easy care, you sort of like your woman goes and gets a hair permanent wave. You have to take these long chains and you have to cross link them. When they finally tamed cotton and what she lovingly called washware cotton, you and I would think of it a little bit different terms, but that to her was just sort of, yep, we did it, let's move on from there. Though she died in 2013, uh, she left behind an oral history, and in it she articulated what I think is a philosophy. I consider myself most fortunate to have had so many opportunities. It's true, there were obstacles. Does anyone ever travel this life without obstacles? Each of us has a limited amount of energy to spend in a lifetime, and each should strive to spend that energy in improving this world by constructive use of his individual talents. <laughs>